Good morning, thank you. Okay, good evening. This is the open meeting of the October 20th, 2020 Hopkins and Conservation Commission meeting, which is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we are complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convened by Zoom as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting will also be recorded by HCAM and hopefully will also be broadcast live. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast by voice or video may be captured by the recording. Supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the commission for this meeting are available on the town's website. After commission members and staff have discussed each project application on the agenda, the chair will open the discussion to public comment. Members of the public who wish to speak are asked to identify their name and their address. Three minutes will be afforded for each public comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote of the commission members. At this time, I'd like to confirm that the commission members are present and can hear me. Jim Cirillo. Yes, I can hear you now. Ed Harrow. Yes, I can hear you. Janine LeBlanc. I don't think she has joined yet. Um, Ted Barker Hook. Ted Barker Hook present. Okay. So hopefully Janine and Carrie will be joining us shortly. And if I can just confirm the members of the staff are here, Don McAdam. Here. Anna Rogers. Present. And Matt Verrill. Here. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Mrs. Uh, we'll just open up one of our public forum uh, items at the beginning of the meeting here because Mrs. Karnakovsky only has limited access to the computer. So uh, Mrs. Karnakovsky, are, are you there? Yes, you thank, thank you. Yeah, it's Ann Karnakovsky and I'm living at 132 East Main Street. So um, what I want to... Good evening. So what I wanted to mention is that the Conservation Commission has issued an order of conditions and permission for Eversource to come in whenever to come into the Liberty Mutual Forest at 71 Franklin Road, uh, where there is presently a gas line easement. Now this easement uh, continues into Ashland and it's actually for the purpose of increasing the flow to Framingham Eversource has proposed changing the pipe diameter from 6 inches to 12 inches. Ashland has taken Eversource to court to get them to remove the decommissioned 6-inch pipe when they put in the 12-inch pipe. And they say, the court said the easement is only for one pipe, whether it's being used or not. Now, I've noticed that there's very little comment on what happens through the forest in in um, Hopkinton. So I would like the Conservation Commission to maybe communicate with Eversource Gas and ask them out of courtesy, would they do the same construction method in the Hopkinton forest, which is very much treasured by trail walkers. And um, so we would ask them to remove the trashed six inch pipe when they put in the 12 inch pipe. So I'd like the Conservation Commission to vote on that if you need to. Um, 
So, well, thank you for, for that information. Um, so just a couple points of clarification. Um, the first point is the Eversource uh, is appealing the decision by the Ashland, uh, and I'm not sure it's the Conservation Commission or the town itself that is requiring removal. Um, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if they're so worried about the removal. I think what they're concerned about is that Ashland does not want any construction in the backyards of residents, and they want Eversource to take a new route down the roadways. But we're not asking that. We're just asking them to, out of courteousness, if they do, and we know they'll be doing the construction through the forest, just to take the old pipe out. Okay, so if I can make my second point, um, which is, um, I think that by requiring Eversource to remove the decommission pipe, in addition to Eversource installing the new 12 inch diameter pipe uh, parallel within the same easement is gonna cause more disturbance of the resource areas than if the pipe is left in place. And from my well, perspective, um, if, if I can finish, from my perspective, the you know, Eversource is required to decommission the six inch line um, so it doesn't pose a you know, long-term environmental liability with it being left in place. So I'm not sure what your rationale is for- Okay, for the my rationale is, is that it's in, instead of space junk, it's earth junk that they wanna leave in there. And um, those of us that are fighting for our lives, so to speak, to preserve the forest and get, uh, Seaboard Solar to give it up and get the town to buy it. Uh, we would prefer not to have earth junk in the in the earth. There could be a source of future pollution. There's just no reason. They've just they have quite a wide easement, and uh, I don't think there would really be much more of a disturbance to take the old junk out. Okay. Well, we'll. Um, I think what we had messaged to you previously is that, you know, the commission will wait until there is a legal um, opinion that's handed down um, from the uh, Ashland decision. And uh, once we know what uh, Eversource is going to do in Ashland, then the commission can consider um, your request at that point. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Um, now we're just talking about taking the old pipe out. That's all. Correct. Okay. Um, so um, if, if you can, if you think it's a good idea to alert Eversource uh, as to what you just said, um, I do think it would be a good idea, but that's just the way I act. Um, I plan things about six months ahead, you know, so I'm not surprised. Okay. All right. Is well, this Jeff? This is Jeff, yes. Okay, nice to meet you. So I'll yep. sign off now. Okay, very good. Thank you. We appreciate your input. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, so let's uh, get going with the 645. Let's. Uh, start with our agenda items. Um, so we have a request for determination of applicability filed by uh, Mr. Cherko for 147 Lumber Street. And I will need to read this for to open the public hearing. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, October 20th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m virtually online to hear all persons interested in a request for determination of applicability filed by Benedict Cherko to determine whether the work depicted on the plan is subject to jurisdiction under the act and the bylaw. The location is 147 Lumber Street, assessor's map R29, block 15, lot zero. Okay.
And I believe we have Mr. Chirko on the line. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good, e good evening. Good evening. Uh, ben Chirko, 147 Lumber Street. I'm here before the Conservation Commission with an application for a request for determination. This permit application was filed at the request of the commission to quote unquote, provide the Hopkinton Conservation Commission an opportunity to decide whether the order of conditions number 188-1636 prohibits the proposed cutting in jurisdictional areas. And if not, whether the proposed activities within the jurisdictional areas qualify for the exemption under the Wetlands Protection Act and the bylaw, unquote. The Conservation Commission is aware that I have two forestry cutting plans which have been approved from the Department of Conservation and Recreation. Some of the cutting is in the wetlands buffer zone that is subject to an order of conditions that were issued on the property to my tenant for a solar project. The first forestry cutting plan was approved in January of 2017. This permit covers land off Lumber Street where my home is. This approved forest cutting plan was discussed at a Conservation Commission public hearing during the permitting of the solar project. In August of 2017, Clean Energy Collective filed a notice of intent to develop a solar farm on a part of my land. On December 14th of 2017, the Conservation Commission issued an order of conditions for this project. The second forestry cutting plan was filed this past August and approved on September 28th of this year. This cutting plan is for, an east, is for the easternmost portion of this site. It is near Alexandra, Alexander and Teresa Roads. A portion of the proposed cutting is adjacent to the solar farm and the majority of the cutting is on a 10 acre parcel north of the solar array. In an effort to comply with the request of the commission, I filed the request for determination. I would be happy to answer any questions the commission may have. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cherko. Uh, so, Don, can we bring up the um, order of conditions and more specifically condition 77, which is the one that we're contemplating tonight? Yeah, I'll grab that right now. Thank you. Uh, so condition 77 of the order of conditions issued for the property um, states in part that the proposed chain link fence as shown on the approved site plan shall act as a permanent immovable barrier constituting the boundary of a permanent area of no disturbance and that the condition is ongoing and does not end upon completion of the project or the issuance of a certificate of compliance. The COC also references condition 77 as a permanent ongoing condition. So, um, and I know the commission members, we've discussed this at a previous meeting. I think what the decision before us here basically boils down to is um, the forest cutting plan that's being proposed by Mr. Cherko, uh, is that a, or would that be a uh, violation or uh, not a violation, but would that be not compliant with the order of conditions based on this specific condition 77? So um, I don't know how much discussion the commission wants to have, but I'll open it up and um, if anyone has a comment, Jeff, uh, feel free. Uh, Jeff, Tim, go ahead. Uh, Jim. Just a brief, a brief comment. Uh, Mr. Turco said that the order of conditions applies basically to his tenant. It actually is with the land that's owned by Mr. Turco and, and not the tenant, right? Um. So it I runs with have, the land. Right, it runs with the land. Uh, sorry, hold on a second, Jim. Mr. 
through the chair? Yes, go ahead. Uh, just want to let know on. in the interim, a certificate of compliance was issued on the project. So in essence, we'd be, you know, looking at the ongoing condition under the certificate of compliance. Right, and the certificate is issued to... Um, is uh, up on the screen now, uh, Hopnin MA1 LLC. Okay. 4 147 Lumber Street. Right, so that would, fifteen zero. So presumably that's the solar company. Um, well, Mr. Churko, is that the solar company or is that you? Well, the, the order conditions are filed by the solar company. Um, whether it runs with but, the land or with the landowner, I guess I'm not an attorney. I don't know. I'm not it sure. It does. But it's issued to the property owner. Okay. And it's recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So it is right with the land. Property. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I was just pointing out that it's not something that is um, solely um, you know, the responsibility of the tenant. It is the landowner. That's all. Understood. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I think, I think we're, we're clear on that. Um, you know, but the question at hand is whether the forest cutting plan, the, the removal of uh, trees, you know, certain trees in the in the area that's subject to the order conditions, would that be um, inconsistent with the order of conditions that was issued for the property? Through the chair. Go ahead, Ted. I don't have a long point to make. It seems to me it would be running against our order of conditions. It's work outside of the permanent immovable barrier. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Um, I uh, do think that the um, yep. condition does not allow for the forest cutting any activity in um, in that area. Okay. All right, Ed, Sarah, this is Ed. Go ahead, Ed. And I concur with the prior two comments. I think I think item seventy seven is pretty explicit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. I, I do as well, that if there is an order of conditions uh, on the, the area where they want to do the tree cutting, then it's, it's subject to the order of conditions. Okay. All right. Um, so I think I'll open it up to public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to speak or has a question. Go ahead and raise your hand. All right, I don't see anyone's hand raised. Um, I'll give you a minute or two. If someone has a question, you can speak up. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, Mr. Would, Churko. So would, would the fact that the first forestry cutting plan plan was filed prior to the order conditions have any bearing on this? You know, are we looking at, I guess, I guess when you say that no clearing, is that for both forestry cutting plans or? That, that would be the, uh, so it would be um, relevant to the forest cutting plan for the 147 Lumber Street property um, and the other NSTAR property that is subject to the order of conditions. Okay. Through the chair? Yep, Don, go ahead. Uh, just to take to the screen, this is the, uh, I'll just scroll up to the top so you can see, this is the March 2017 plan and the forest cutting plan was not for this area it was just for the remainder of this area here. Then the next plan from 2010 
that's already been approved. It just got approved this September from DCR was for this area, which wasn't part of the 2017. So I think this is the area that now becomes within the PIB that the commission has concerns with. The, the area in there, or basically on the RDA plan, the uh, forest cutting plan in this area, not in the, um, not in the uh, other area. Which is subject to the order of conditions, correct, Don? Right. Okay, so just so I'm clear, there's two forestry cutting plans uh, that have been approved by the DCR. Yes. One of those forestry cutting plans is subject to land on which our order of conditions has been issued. The second forestry cutting plan applies to property um, which is not subject to the order of conditions, which is adjacent to um, the property we're discussing. Is that correct? No. Um, you've got you've got a on the second plan a portion of the uh, and let me bring up the GISs so you can guys can get a sense of. Uh, let me go back to the RDA so you can get a sense of the two different parcels. So. Bring up one GIS map. Let me bring up the second one. So the first map here is the area that was subject to the order of conditions. You also have a parcel here, which it shows up on this one here. So the 2020, the current, uh, the most recent forest cutting plan is for this parcel and this parcel. So it includes both. Right, so the commission had, you know, the PIB would have been along here behind this fence line. And then you also get a wetland here. So associated with the solar panels, the commission had concerns, you know, basically the PIB, the language covers this area for the protection of that and this area for the protection of that. Got it. So there's a portion of there's this property that's within the current forest cutting plan that is not subject to the order of conditions as well, correct? This one, this parcel right here. That parcel Off right there. The road. Okay. Uh, R3020. Got it. Okay. Okay. So I guess the point I'm making. Um, what I'm trying to get clarification on is, depending on how the decision is rendered tonight, um, a portion of the property that is under the current forest cutting plan can still go forward uh, because it's not subject to our order of conditions. Is that correct? That's yeah. been approved by the DCR. Right, so I, I think the RDA discussion would be subject to the ongoing conditions of the certificate of compliance. Right. So, uh, this lot. Got it, okay. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, Don, hold on one second. Through the chair, question. Yeah, go ahead, Ted. Uh, just for clarification, and I think we discussed this at a previous meeting, but I want to make sure that I understand it. And if there's anyone in the audience, for that northerly parcel, Don, that you were just showing, any chance? There you go. Those are all wetlands, but my understanding is the DCR approval overrules our wetlands protections. Through the chair? Yes, Don, go ahead. I wouldn't say overrules. There's a there's an exemption under the the state act and the in the town's bylaw, subject to harvesting trees under a forest cutting plan. So, and what the question is is that exemption overridden 
or null and void due to the ongoing conditions under the certificate of compliance on this particular parcel. Right, so for the northerly parcel, uh, DCR has approved limited work within the wetlands. Right. And, and, then, and so that's not really part of our discussion tonight. Is that true? Correct. Uh, so despite the wetlands being there. Yeah. So DCR's approval goes from, this is the old, this is the area that is under the order of conditions, certificate of compliance. This area is not. And he's only proposing no harvesting in the wetland, in the white area. The wetland is white. There's no harvesting there. There is some harvesting here just to be able to access the buffer zone here to do harvesting in the buffer zone. So obviously this area of harvesting in the buffer zone is what the commission's reviewing now. And also there was some approval here back in the day, but it's now under the, um, the PIB I think is along this area as well. Not, not so much on the other side of the driveway. Thank you, Don. I think it's clear in my head. Uh, this, this is Janine. Just, just for clarification, that northerly parcel that's not under the order of conditions. So if there is a forest cutting plan in there, they they would need to access it without disturbing the land that is under the order of conditions. Correct. Yeah, that would. Yeah, okay. you wouldn't want the buffer zone to get disturbed. Okay. Okay, we have uh, some. Comments from the public, uh, Dana Hall. Ms. Hall, do you have a comment? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah, Dana Hall, 62 Teresa Road. I just wanted to um, reiterate what it seems like the commission has said is that it seems as if item 77 calls for a permanent um, buffer zone that's delineated by that that fence and just from a citizen's viewpoint if you were to vote that not to be the case then it would seem as if your, your decisions in the past are, are not consistent going forward so I would encourage you to vote that it the item 77 stay in place and that there be no disturbance beyond that point. My second question is um, a little bit more hypothetical because I believe the whole point of going into that zone is to gain access to the Northern piece of land to do cutting. And that the forest cutting plan is for both, that was issued by DCR is for both pieces. How does that, I don't know, resolve itself if one portion is considered not, not in compliance and the other portion is. Um, that would be a question for uh, DCR, but presumably um, the uh, you know portion that is not subject to the order of conditions could go forward with the harvesting if you if you know if Mr. Churko can access get access to the property from you know an area that's not subject to the order of conditions. So does that mean he does not have to apply for a new forest cutting plan or, or is the the, the current one that's been approved for 2020, even though part of it is in violation, could still go forward? Um, well, it's, I, I, I don't think the application is in violation, um, but you know, this, is a, this is a DCR permit, so I'm not quite sure the mechanics of how that works. Um, Don or Matt, do you have any insight? Yeah, I mean, uh... It's just like, like all of our, our permits, like here's, here's a order of conditions for it. We've got standard language. It says 
yeah, we're approving it, but you can't do the work until you get all your other permits from the other parties, you know? So in essence, DCR can say, yeah, you can do it. But if the commission has uh, an ongoing condition that says you can't do it in a certain area, then that holds sway. That's the whole point of this conversation. Does the, does the exemption under the act and the bylaw hold or does the conditions, you know, govern? Mr. Chair? Yes, Matt, go ahead. So I, I don't have a lot to add on this. I don't have a ton of experience on it uh, directly, but it certainly seems as though if the forest cutting plan you know, require, as part of that process requires demonstrating access to the areas, then it seems like potentially the plan would at least need to be amended if access is coming through a different property. Um, and I don't know if Mr. Cherko can can speak to that or not. Uh, that's Mr. a good Chair. point. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Cherko. I guess I don't really have an answer how I would access that at this point. Um, I, I don't own any any other way out of there. Um, so. I'm not sure exactly what would happen. Okay, thank you. Okay, there was another comment from the public um, and there's no name, but there's just a number 508-207-8361. You can state your name and address, please. Hello? Any comment, question? Okay, uh, let me just take another look here. All right, I don't see anyone else's hand raised. Okay. All right, so I think um, we're ready to vote on this. Uh, it'll be a roll call vote and um, and the request for the determination is, you know, whether the ongoing condition um, in the order of condition um, will be upheld and um, not allow disturbance um, in the area that's subject to the order of conditions. So if I can get a motion to issue a positive determination. To the chair, just for clarification. Yep. A yes vote would be do not cut trees in the area under the order uh, of conditions. That's a yes vote. Do not. Correct. That's okay. correct. Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll through, through the chair? Yes, Matt. Um, I think just uh, might help some clarification, Ted. Um, so a positive determination basically would require the filing of a notice of intent for tree clearing in that area. I think it would be the notice of intent process where you would actually deny the work or approve the work. So I, th I think, you know, right now you're just saying, is a notice of intent required if Mr. Churko were to move forward with doing the work? So I don't know that you're necessarily denying it here, but you're certainly making a statement that were he to come back with a notice of intent, it seems unlikely it would be approved. But I think that's, and Don or Jeff, correct me if you think that's incorrect, but I think that's no. kind of what a positive determination would do is require the notice of intent, which would then start this discussion again before any actual approval or denial occurred. Thank yeah. you, Matt. That's really helpful. And I think it's probably good for the audience to know too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that clarification, Matt. Through the chair? Yes, Don. Yeah, I was going to recommend just everything kind of sort of like Matt said. Typically, we don't do a finding of fact on a positive, but might be a good idea to have like an attached memo because it's such a you know unusual circumstance. I think that's a good point. Uh, if we can do that, it'll just provide clarification for a future uh, reference. Certainly. Okay. So, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay, Janine. that's Janine, and do we have a second, please? Ed Harrell, I'll second. Okay, and Ed second. We'll do the roll call vote. Carrie. Uh, since I missed most of the conversation, I'm going to abstain. Okay. Plus you don't need me for a quorum. 
All right, Jim. Yes, positive. Ed. Ted or Ed? Ed. <laughs> yes. Janine. Aye. Uh, yes. Ted. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chirgo. Uh, through the chair, uh, since we're uh, not meeting for 21 days, if we could just sign an electronic signature page and uh, the staff will move forward with um, getting that um, issued. Yes, please, Don. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right, moving along, Crosby 407 Wood Street. This is a continuation of request for the termination of applicability for a failed septic system replacement. Do we have someone representing yes, Mr. Mr. Crosby? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, Rob Truax from GLM Engineering Consultants, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Truax. How are we doing tonight? Doing well. How about yourself? Good. Good. So this is a single family home, an existing house located at 407 Wood Street in Hopkinton. And it's right across from Harvey's uh, industrial building, if you're familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. So right now they have a failed septic system located in the front yard. It uh, comes out of the front portion of the house just about with us just with a proposed septic tank is located there's a picture of the house so we did some soil testing out there the only area we found was in the front um, there's wetlands to the south of the property which is the left hand border you can see the wetland line goes down along the border then it comes across portion of the back property the uh, back portion of this property is slightly lower than the front yard we did the testing in the front. We're proposing to put the system in the front back pretty much in the same area where it exists today. We were able to obtain a setback from the closest point of the wetland of 65 feet to the, I guess it would be the closest leaching trench, which is the uh, trench closest to the house. Um, we're, we're meeting pretty much all the setbacks and the minimums were 15 feet off the street. We have a impervial barrier to prevent breakout from the sewers because we can't meet the slope requirements going down to the street. So we have some sloping challenges as well for the system. Um, we have three trenches, as you can see, the tank's gonna be located 10 feet from the house. The existing bit driveway is the main driveway they use. The, there is a gravel drive that provides access to the rear of the property that goes up on the left-hand side that's there today. Um, there's really no reason to be, other, you know, other than using the gravel driveway for maybe access to do some construction on the system. We do have to take a couple big trees down in the front yard to put the system in. There's a 24 inch pine right at the corner of the system. They have the driveway. You can see it right there on the plan. And it's possible, it looks like it's already gone <laughs> in that picture. <laughs> so that tree needed to come down to put the septic system in. It looks like he's already taken care of that. Yeah, we took down both the trees. Yeah, so the two trees in the front of I guess have already been removed. So they would have come down to put the system in anyway. It was necessary to do that. And that's pretty much it. Um, the work's all kept to the front yard. We can do some stockpiling on the left-hand side of the front of the site between the gravel drive and the septic system. And access is easy. We come in the bit driveway, we come in the gravel driveway up plenty of access to get into the site right there where we're building it. So with that, I can take any questions the commission might have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Truax. I think this looks pretty straightforward to me. Um, the work is in previously disturbed area and where pretty much the existing um, system was located or is located. Matt, did you have any uh, specific comments? No, uh, really the only comment that I had was that it appears they jumped the gun a little bit on the tree removal, but it seemed like they were going to have to come down. So, right. Nothing else. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission? Questions or comments from the audience? 
I don't see any hands raised. Okay, if I can get a motion to issue a negative determination and the request for determination. Carrie, I'll make the motion. Okay, Carrie made the motion and a second, please. Ted, second. Ted made the second and we'll do the roll call. Carrie. Carrie's an aye since she made the motion. Uh, Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. We appreciate have a good night. It. Okay. Have a good evening. Thank you. We'll do a signature page for that as well, Jeff. Okay, Don. Thank you. Okay, moving along, REC Hopkinton, Zero Chamberlain Street. This is a second amendment to the notice of intent with a continuation um, or the continued notice of intent for roadway and stormwater changes. So, good evening, uh, John Cusick with Bowler Engineering. Good evening, Mr. Cusick. Scott Goddard is also here with Goddard Consulting. Okay, good evening, Mr. Goddard. Hey. So when we were before the commission at the last uh, last hearing, we presented the um, the project to the commission. Uh, we talked about the benefits of, of why we were making this change and how it really benefited um, really everybody as a whole. We think it's a, a good change to the uh, to the project. Uh, there were not any um, specific comments from the um, commission that we weren't able to uh, to address. I don't think you really had many many comments at all on it, short of making sure that Beta took a look at the um, the project from a drainage standpoint, because there were a couple of um, modifications to some of the basins that were previously proposed. Um, so we've done that, and they submitted their comment letter back to um, to us towards the end of last week, and we submitted a quick turnaround uh, letter to you. Um, comments were very, very uh, straightforward. Um, and we really don't have any issues with any of what they had. It was just really providing some additional information. Yes, yeah. Two, two comments required some very minor um, plan changes. Uh, SW3. Scroll down one. It just referred to a um, um, called it a, I think a reverse uh, flow, a drain manhole 22 or 222. Essentially, we had a, a greater than a 90 degree turn, so it was more of a it, it was kind of a sharp sharp angle for the flow of the water there. We just added another manhole to make sure it was all 90 degrees or or or, or greater. Um, so we made that change to the to the plan. And one additional comment they had is they asked us to show the interim contour um, lines for the top of the berm. It doesn't always follow at a, um, an exact you know, one foot elevation. So they wanted just an interim contour level there. Okay. We added that as well and put that onto the, the plan. Uh, beyond that, there weren't any plan changes that were necessitated from, from this. Okay. There were just a quick, uh, I guess add to the O and M plan, and again, the O and M plan was previously submitted with a with a past application. They just asked that we sign uh, the O and M plan uh, when we resubmitted it uh, from the uh, owner, and they asked us this time to add some of the drainage easements. So as part of this, there's going to be easements through the lots when they get uh, developed to get to the basins. They just added wanted us to add the easements to the um, to the graphic that was previously provided, which which we did that. Okay. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, there wasn't in, anything in there that um, that we took exception to or or had any major um, really weren't able to address. Okay, all right, Mr. Cusick. Thank you for the update. Um, I'll open it up to questions from the commission members at this point. I think, as you said, it's pretty straightforward. But uh, any comments? Any questions or comments from audience members, public? Through the chair? Yes, Don, go ahead. Um, yeah, we did, we did just get the information today. So, you know, Beta doesn't have a chance to look at it. 
just didn't know if you wanted them to be able to review the information and you know i was i was going to suggest on that we um vote to approve uh contingent on getting beta's final um you know sign off you are I think, you know, just looking at this, I, I agree with Mr. Cusick, the changes I think were fairly straightforward and, you know, rather than hold this up, oh, no. another, you know, if beta reviews it and they're good with it, I think um, I feel comfortable uh, voting on it tonight, contingent upon that approval, if that makes yep. sense. Yeah, I was just looking for that caveat. Yep, you guys have done that in the past, you know. Yep, is everyone on the commission okay with that? Okay. Yes. Like through the chair. Yes, Matt. Sorry, I didn't ask you for your comments. I, I apologize. Oh, that's all right. Um, my comment is sort of somewhat tangent to the application. I, I think you know Beta has done their view and everything. I don't really have any comment on that. Really, I was just hoping while the applicants before the commission, if they could provide an update on the work for the construction of the actual crossing on the Whalen Road side, um, just because as you remember the they had very early on in the process, they had come before the commission asking for sort of a modification of the approval to allow a temporary crossing. Um, and now the work is well into the site, but it doesn't appear as though the the, the actual crossing has been built, built at Whalen Road. And just with the dry weather we've had and the drought conditions, it seems as though the time to build that crossing would be in these conditions rather than uh, putting it off so i'm not sure what the what the delay has been because i think it was, it was sort of the way it was explained to the commission was sort of they needed to get access into the site to do the tree clearing and then once you know that work was done sort of one of the first things that would be done would be you know removing the temporary crossing and putting in a permanent crossing so i just don't know if they want to speak to that or if you wish them to speak to that. i think that that that's a that's a good uh, suggestion mr goddard or mr cusick can you just give us an update I, mean, I can chime in a little bit on that. And John, I don't know if you have more information you'd like to, to add, but we've been doing the monitoring of the site for order conditions compliance. They're doing a very good job keeping the site in check in compliance. Uh, work has begun somewhat on the replication area. We're hoping to get that all finished uh, during this dry spell. And I think Matt makes a good point to just push hard to not miss this window of opportunity. So um, I'm out there, I'm in regular contact with the on-site contractors and I will re-emphasize the, the aggressive need to keep the schedule going to get the stuff regarding that crossing done, you know, ASAP. Okay, great, thank you. Mr. Cusick, any additional info you wanted to add? No, no, I think um, I think Scott summed it up. I think that's something they're, they're trying to get that moving ASAP. Uh, they're working with the uh, the fabricators now uh, to get everything um, expedited to the extent that they can. I think we're waiting on some information from the electric company uh, to be able to 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 move forward with some of those penetrations. Uh, but that is something I think we're we're all in alignment. And we want to move that as quickly as possible. Okay. And they and they did start, you know, they, they started with the tree cutting and they're, they're moving this forward. So they, they know this is a pressing issue, but I'll, I'll reemphasize that with them. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, if I can get a motion to close and approve the uh, second amended notice of intent as discussed with the caveat that, uh, again, that beta uh, reviews the submitted information and approves it. Ted, so moved. Okay, Ted made the motion and a second, please. I'll second, Janine. And Janine made the second, and we will do the roll call vote. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Jim? Aye. Ted? Aye. Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. All right. Very good. Thank you, folks. Appreciate Thank you all. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You as well. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, moving along. Spiegel, 24 Downey Street. This is a continuation of, of a notice of intent to raise a house and construct a new house.
Yeah, this is John Spiegel. I also have Chris Anderson from Hannigan Engineering on the line. Good evening, Mr. Spiegel. All right, Mr. Well, Anderson. Perfect. All right, so uh, just to refresh again, so like Chris Anderson, Hannigan Engineering, uh, just to refresh the commission on the project, um, it's for the uh, demolition and the reconstruction of the existing single family home at 24 Downey Street. Um, the slight uh, generally slopes in a westerly direction towards the Lake Ness of Pinnock. Um, and it's the intent to provide the um, various amenities to the site as well as part of the construction of the pro uh, building itself. Um, during our previous hearing, uh, there were several com comments and concerns that, was, that were raised by both the Commission and uh, Luke's Environmental. Uh, we have revised the plans um, per the review letter um, by Lucas and um, comments by the commission as well. Um, and I will go through, I can go through those real quickly if you would like, just to make everything a little bit quicker. That'd be helpful, Mr. Anderson. So um, we have included a six by six drywall uh, system to be located on the uh, south uh, westerly corner of the proposed uh, patio slash deck area. Uh, this will capture a portion of the roof runoff uh, via gutter line flows. Uh, from the front of the building and along the uh, westerly side of the building and direct this underground through underground piping into the drywall. Uh, the drywall will have an in and out uh, feature so that it'll fill up with water as necessary and then immediately discharge. Um, there'll be riprap stone put at the outlet um, to help provide any kind of velocity mitigation. Um, and in that general area as well, uh, concern was raised by both Lucas and the commission relative to the existing 12 inch RCP drain line that's in the corner of the property. Uh, we have reviewed that um, with the applicant um, and we note that much of the actual existing swell coming off of that drain line is located on the abutting property. Um, and unfortunately we can't perform work on property that's not our own. Uh, it's my understanding and John correct me if I'm wrong, but you've had conversations with your abutting neighbor and they are amenable to doing some uh, riprap for velocity mitigation. Um, so I would pr uh, propose that at the time of construction, if uh, that agreement is still amenable between the two parties, we can review that with the commission or its agent um, and review what we're actually going to do. Um, unfortunately, I can't put it on the plan because we technically don't have rights to that part of the property. Um, but it, we, it is a line item that we are willing to address if appropriate during the construction phase. Um, and also to that note, uh, concern was raised by uh, the commission relative to the condition of that uh, existing drain line as well. Um, and I believe, John, correct me if I'm wrong again, uh, but DPW came out, um, I guess, last week at some point and snaked the line to confirm that uh, the line was intact still and functioning as appropriate. That is correct. Yeah, the town did come out to take a look at the line and did not find any issues. And I can confirm the most previous storm that there was definite function of that pipe. Okay, thank you. Um, in addition to that, we also um, got into contact with a tree arborist who was able to perform an inspection of the proposed trees that uh, we are proposing to remove. Uh, he found that most of the trees were in a state of, um, I guess, some were um, structurally disabled, um, unable to, or would have issues um, with leaning functions and missing limbs and everything like that. Uh, with the exception of one tree, a red oak that's being proposed to be removed near the stairwell system from the deck patio area towards the um, existing dock area. Um, that tree uh, we're proposing to have removed only because it's in very close proximity to the existing uh, or the proposed limit of construction. And it's our fear that if during the course of construction, any damage were to happen to the tree, that it would eventually fall down um, and it would be caused further issues later down, down the road due to the location of the proposed house, uh, just primarily because we wouldn't be able to get to it uh, easily because most of these trees are going to need a uh, large crane um, mounted facility or Truck or vehicles in order to remove them as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's a small lot. I think I'm okay with that. You know, we would just ask that, um, uh, you know, when you remove the trees, that you 
um, replace them with smaller trees, um, you know, post construction. All right, I think that covered all of the comments, correct, Mr. Anderson? Um, yes, that's my understanding. It's all the comments that we received. Yep, okay. Okay, all right, thank you for the update. Um, let me open it up to Matt first. Matt, did you have any questions or comments? Um, just a couple fairly minor things. I, I know the, the plan was revised based on a comment to show that the dock is the original existing conditions plan didn't wouldn't accurately show the dock. Um, and I'm still not sure it really does currently. Um, there's, there's a sort of a secondary part of the dock to the north of the of the main part there. And again, I, I don't know how critical it is other than how that dock was originally permitted um, either through the commission or um, chapter 91. Um, so there's that. And then secondly, th there was a uh, detail added with regard to the live staking that's proposed along uh, the bank, um, which again, I think is a, is a good idea. It's a great way to stabilize the bank long term. Um, and the, the detail calls for, um, yeah, so you can see in the picture there, the other chunk of dock that's sort of right at the water's edge uh, mm -hmm. to the north of the, of the main dock there. Um, but with regard to the live staking, um, it shows it three to five foot on center. And typically live staking is more on the one to two foot on center just because you're literally just driving a stake into the bank. Um, so you can put it quite close and the, and the density provides uh, quicker and better stabilization um, through those areas. So I think my recommendation would be to, to modify that um, detail or just have a special condition that calls for um, a little bit more density on on those plantings, and they're you know fairly cheap as well, is my understanding. So okay, I um, think we can call it out as a special condition, so we don't have to go back and revise the plan. Uh, yeah. As far as the as far as the dock, I think we can just in the final as built, you know, we can depict the full location of the dock. Um, I don't see. I don't yeah, this is John. Um, that dock as it is a floating dock, I have to bring it in to shallower water uh, okay. to avoid damage during the off season. So uh, it's, not a, it's not a permanent dock. No, correct. No, that is floating. But uh, in between the time when the picture was taken and the most current um, time I was there, I moved the dock to the more shallow area for permanent off season storage. Okay. All right. Thank you. For the chair? Yes, Don. Is it uh, when you have it in place? Is it is it staked to the ground or is it or is it? No, just... it's affixed to the existing dock that is uh, as described in the plan. And did you install that or it was existing? How long how long have you had that? No, to my knowledge, that um, was there for some time. Okay. I have had to. Um, move it obviously off season, but um, yes, it has been there for some time. Okay, um, I'll open it up to questions or comments from commission members. Okay. So the chair, um, this is Ed. Yep, go ahead, Ed. As a resident tree hugger, I think the tree cutting is excessive, and that's my sole comment. Okay. Thank you. Let me just see. Do we have any questions or comments from the public at this point? And feel free to raise your hand in Zoom. Just give it a minute. <clears throat> I don't see anyone. Okay. All right. Um, so if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent as discussed. Ted, so moved. Okay, Ted made the motion and a second, please. Terry, second. Terry made the second and we will do the roll call vote. Terry. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. No. Janine. Aye. Ted? 
Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay, very good, Mr. Spiegel. Good luck with the project. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Have a good evening. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. No, thank you. Have a good night. You too. Through the chair, we'll, uh, we'll get a signature page for that one and work on it as well. Okay, Don. Very good. Thank you. All right. And I think we're ready to move on to um, our work session items. All right. So we have Smithson and Petrosi. Those were submitted, signed and submitted. We have a new application for 114 Pond Street, request for determination of applicability. Um, okay. The draft minutes of July 28th, 2020. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Any comments or questions? If I can get a motion to approve the minutes of July 28th. Ted, so moved. Ted, in a second, please. Janine, I'll second. Okay, Janine, and we'll do the roll call vote. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. All right. Okay, Don, Mass DOT, a project change request. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone's out there for. Mass DOT on this. Do we have anyone in the audience from the Mass Department of Transportation? Doesn't look like it, Don. Okay. Um, when I quickly looked at it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Ed Hutchinson with Tetra Tech. <laughs> okay, oh, Mr. Hutchinson, how you doing? Good, thanks. Sorry about that. I was muted. You weren't, you weren't falling asleep on us, were you? Yeah, no, I'm doing all right. Thanks. Okay, good. All uh, right, so you want to give us an overview? Sure. Uh, basically, this is a project change request um, for uh, sediment sampling for uh, proposed dredging um, for the I-495, I I-90 interchange improvements. Um, the commission issued an order of conditions um, in April 2019 for the geotechnical program. Mm -hmm. which um, you know, for, uh, to, to determine uh, structural stability for the bridges and things like that in the area. And um, at that time, uh, two, uh, two observation walls were approved, 18 borings in BLSF and six borings in BBW. Um, so basically with, uh, when we had to um, submit the 401 uh, for dredging, um, that requires sediment sampling in the areas we we're gonna be dredging. Um, so we decided to try and just, um, tack this on as a request for project change for the geotechnical, um, notice of intent. So anyway, there's, um, three areas where we're going to be, uh, proposing dredging that we have to sample. Uh, the, if maybe Dawn could go down to the, uh, pictures. There you go. Um, it's, I think the, it's the first, first sheet and then maybe the second and third photos. Um, that's an overview right there. Yep. Um. So basically there's two areas in Whitehall Brook in the lower area of the picture um, in the Western part, uh, the area uh, north of Whitehall and the area south of Whitehall. And then um, stream crossing number 10, which is in the area of the former toll plaza. Uh, so those are the three areas in, uh, in Hawkinton. Um, the next slide, Don, if you just go up one, um, that's Whitehall Brook South. Uh, the proposed dredging in that area is gonna be for uh, some scour countermeasures when they put the uh, new culvert in across Whitehall. And so we need to uh, sample those two dredge areas um, for sediment sampling, for grain size analysis, uh, eight record metals, things like that, as part of the 401 uh, water quality search. Uh, if you go to the next slide, it's the area north of Whitehall Brook, similar uh, two, two dredging locations, uh, one dredging location, sorry, two boring locations. And these borings are just gonna be by hand auger, two man crew, uh, going in there um, with, with hand augering tools. Um, so no clearing of vegetation is needed and anything like that. Um, okay. then, the, then the next slide is the area south of the toll plaza. Um, 
again, two sampling locations um, by hand auger um, and, and no clearing of vegetation. So basically we thought we'd try to tack this on as a project change request uh, to, the, um, to the order conditions that was issued last spring. Um, uh, really no inv invasive, anything like that. Um, you know, not a, not a big deal, but uh, if anybody has any questions, we'd uh, be happy to answer. Okay, great, thank you. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, Matt, did you have any comments? No, it looks pretty straightforward to me. Okay, uh, questions or comments from commission members? Questions or comments from the public? Feel free to raise your hand. All right, doesn't look like we have any questions from the public. Okay, I can get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So moved, this is Ed. Ed made the motion and second, please. Carrie, second. All right, Carrie, and we'll do the roll call vote. So Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. Um, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, Mr. Hutchinson. You too. Thanks. All right, Don, let me know when you're ready to move on. Okay. Getting into uh, 1687. What was that? 20 Saddle Hill Road project change request. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Brian Waterman from WDA Design Group here. Good evening, Mr. Waterman. Um, would you like me to start? On... Sure, you can kind of give us okay. an overview of where you're at. That'd be helpful. Right, um, well, the last meeting, I think the, the main comment uh, or concern was regarding the turnout from the driveway into the buffer zone. Uh, and also the retaining wall that was shown there, although it had been reduced to two feet. Mm -hmm. So we looked at the potential to rotate the houses a bit with the, uh, you know, given with the setbacks and, uh, and not affect the approved septic or, uh, or cover over that infiltration. Um, so we, we were able to rotate the house and adjust the turnout so that it's now out of the 100 foot buffer zone and uh, softened up that grade a bit and got rid of the stone wall, the retaining wall. Okay. Um, and then on the left-hand side, I know there was a question about potentially pulling in that, um, the PIB and the limit of uh, work there on, the, on that, uh, I guess it's the west side there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that side there, thank you, Don. Um, but the, the clearing had already taken place for this under the approved order and the limit of work. Um, so we left the boundary there, but we've suggested adding some supplemental tree and shrub plantings to enhance the uh, one, the, the character, get it back to uh, a mix of woods and shrubs along with the, we left the uh, understory of the proposed plantings that was approved before with the meadow and then mixed in some uh, shrub and tree species, which are, I've shown in the plant key down on the bottom of the plan there. Uh, it's a mixture of hazelnut and low bush blueberry, witch hazel, white pine, black birch, and red oak. So native stuff that's in there, uh, okay. and a lot of it with uh, a higher uh, wildlife value uh, with you know, spe uh, nuts and other fruits for wildlife habitat. So um, those are the changes since the last plan. Um, oh, that's a really old plan there, Don. That was, I think the, I think that was the original, yeah. Yeah, that was What you see there is the one that was talked about at the last meeting. Right, okay. 
Um, that, that was to get the driveway to the left because of the safety issue with the site distance. Yep, um, I recall. So then the, the I think the two main comments were <clears throat> um, the driveway turnout, which we've moved and we're able to ro rotate the house enough to get the, the turnout out of the buffer zone. And then we added some additional uh, shrub and tree plantings on the, uh, on the other side there. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Waterman. That looks sure. good to me. Uh, Matt, did you have any comments? Uh, no, look fine. My really, my only comment at all would be, um, I know it's proposed to use low bush blueberry in that replanting area. Um, my experience, low bush blueberry, uh, at least in the past, has been difficult to obtain, and secondly, a little bit difficult to have survive. It's a, a difficult plant to transplant. Um, but I guess, you know, the commission's all right with it. You know, it's up to the applicant, I guess, if they would, the commission would want some sort of monitoring of these areas to ensure uh, some level of success potentially. Well, yeah, we, we could, we could, could propose Matt, high, high bush blueberry instead of low bush blueberry. Um, yeah, depending. So the difference, the main difference, Jeff, between those two species, the low bush is an upland plant and high bush is, is a wetland plant. Okay. Um, I don't know what Brian's thoughts are as far as putting some high bush in there. You know, it's it can it can grow. Uh, you know, sometimes you see it in the buffer zone areas. It really, kind of depends on the soils and, and the hydrology uh, of the yeah. area. Yeah, the pretty sandy soils in there, Matt. But I mean, we could substitute something for the low bush, or just add some additional uh, hazelnut or maybe a choke cherry or or something to that effect in there. Yeah, I think the I think the spirit is in the right direction. You know, if you want to substitute, I think that's okay. And you can just uh, run it by Don and Matt um, when you decide what you want to do. I think sure we're, we're good with that. Okay, questions or comments from the commission members through the chair. Yes, Ted. Brian, I just wanted to thank you for your work on the driveway. I was the one giving you the hardest time about that turnaround. <laughs> I'm glad you found a way to make it work. It makes me happy. No, that's, thank that's you. Great like like to have these informals and discuss it and you know do some more planning so so thank you very much sure okay all right do we have any questions or comments from the public all right it doesn't look like it okay if i can get a motion to close uh, or excuse me to approve the project change request as discussed this is ted i'm happy to make that motion all right, Ted is happy to make the motion and a second, please. This is Ed, I'll second it. Okay, Ed, and we'll do the roll call vote. Uh, Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay, great, Mr. Waterman, thank you. And uh, you know we appreciate you working with us on this. All right, thank you all. Echo have a good Ted's night. Point. Okay, have a good evening. You too. Okay, uh, Cherco 21 Stony Brook Road, a project change request. Hey, I just checked your bed. I wouldn't put. <laughs> All right. So you want to give us uh, bring up the plan down. I don't think Mr. Cherko is on the call um, oh, okay. anymore. Uh, oh, hold on. I think he dropped off. Okay. Am I on? Oh, he's on. Yes. Okay. Hey, Mr. Cherko. Thank you. So uh, Ben Cherko, 147 Lumber Street. Uh, the proposed plan change here is I, I would like to eliminate the longer wall that I have with the X's and put in a shorter wall along the hay bale line just and, and do some additional grading in the backyard. And then uh, the other changes, I'd like to, uh, the, the option to make the deck wider uh, not get any closer to the wetlands, but just wider 
um, in the event that, you know, I feel I should have a bigger deck because there's not much of a backyard. Okay. And then the wall is, um, what's the approximate, is it moving like five feet? Um, I think it's like nine feet. Let me check here. It's about uh, eight feet moving towards the wetlands. Okay. It, it'll still be, yeah, about 30, 30 feet away. All right, and so the wall was going to act as the PIB, correct? Right. So I think, um, you know, we would just, since it's, the wall isn't going to be as long, we would just need to install some medallions along Fine. that um, section where the wall, you know, previously was going to be located. I may, through the chair, I may, where those stars are, I may just put boulders there. Um, if that's acceptable, if not, I can put the side, the medallions in. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's eight feet. I, I think I'm good with that. Um, I don't have an issue. Questions or comments from commission members? Through the chair. Yes, Ted. Um, there's a lot going on on that plan, so I'm having trouble reading it. Uh, Mr. Cherko, the eight feet you're talking about, can or maybe Don, you can help me. Eight feet from where to where? Um, because that it looks like it's an angle away from the wall, the, the new wall versus the deleted one. Because what I'm really wondering is, was that wall the PIB before? And now we're moving the whole PIB back eight feet or more? Through the, through the chair? Yes, Don. This is the, uh, this is the approved plan. So you've got PIB here. So it's, it's, it's in factions. You know, you got a PIB here, which could be boulder or signage. Then the wall was going to be part of the PIB and then going back to boulders or signage. You know, so it's a multifunctional PIB, if you will. So now the project change is just zooming in on this section of the wall. So changing the wall. Oh, it, from, I'm sorry, yeah. Don. So it's really only that little angle where we're pushing back the PIB. The rest of it is staying the way it was originally approved. Correct. Okay, thank you. And, and excuse me, through the chair, but by eliminating that section of wall makes it a little safer for you know, the future owner so there's not a drop off that's actually graded out. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Mr. Trigo. Okay, are there any other questions or comments from commission members? All right, questions or comments from the audience, public? I don't see any hands, okay. All right, if I can get a motion to approve the project change as discussed. Janine, so moved. All right, Janine, and a second, please. Carrie, second. Carrie made the second, we'll do the roll call vote. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Cherko, thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving along. Um, to Higgy, 19 Stony Brook Road. And this is a project change request as well. We have the applicant on the call. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, good evening. Hi. You just wanna give us an overview of the proposed uh, just, change? Yeah, we just have a new, uh, you know, um, a new house foundation plan. And it's very similar to the previous one. It's the same size almost, but it's a new house. So. It's like the same size, pretty much. So it's the same footprint, pretty much. 
Well, it's a different footprint. It's like uh, it's the same size, meaning like it's like an eighty. I bought the lot, so it's a right. new. Yeah, you know, it's a new. I'm, I'm the new owner. We have a new design for our house, so it's a little bit different. But the width of it is the same. The 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 you know, it's like an eighty by seventy eight, eighty by uh, forty feet. The distances are all the same. Actually, it was better on this design from the uh, from the wetlands. So the house is moving farther away from the wetlands. Is that my understanding? Well, to be to be to be <laughs> to be technical, it's like a half a foot. It's not that much, but it's a little bit further out. Just, just a little bit. Okay. So Don, this was the previously approved plan that we're looking at now. Yeah, so right now this is the uh, this is the approved plan. So the old footprint, and it's a very busy plan. But you got your fifty foot setback here, and you got your fifty foot setback here. Setback here, and the fifty foot setback here. So this is the new one. Correct. This is the okay. project change. I mean, it looks like the changes to me are fairly nominal. Um, to your point, I mean, this is a very busy plan, so it's um, a little tough to discern it. But I mean, Don, would you agree that the, the changes are fairly minor? Yeah, because it's still meeting the the fifty foot setback, and this is one of the lots that has a twenty five foot limit of work. 50 foot limit of structure. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. points, yeah, where it gets close and, you know, each one's a, it's really close here and in here it's almost touching on the old approved one. And here, you know, you got a little, like you said, a half foot there and maybe a little, you know, it's not as tight. It's, it's, it's you know, kind of, you know, uh, turned clockwise as opposed to, this is more counterclockwise. So. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing something with the uh, with all the information that's on the plan. Okay, I think this I'm looks. Just getting eyes on this now. <laughs> Everything's been so busy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Questions or comments from commission members? All right. Questions or comments from the public? Nope. Okay. If I can get a motion to approve the project change request as discussed. So moved. Zed. Ed made the motion in a second. Carrie, second. Carrie, second in. We'll do the roll call vote. Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay, sir. Very good. You're all set. Thank you. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Okay, have a good, good evening. evening. Good night. All right, Hayes, 16 Downey Street, Don. Yeah, getting to it. All right. Good evening, all. Good evening, Mr. Hayes. How are you tonight? Doing fantastic. How are you tonight? Good. Thank you for your patience. Oh, no worries. Thank you. So you had a uh, you wanted to extend the wall on the property um, towards the shed. That was one of the changes, correct? Yes, sir. We had a um, we had a flood out, and one of the people on the board had made a comment that we don't know how we're going to control the water going into the shed, and we found out that they were correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, the house looks nice. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, that's the shed. That was the house. That was the shed. Okay. Shed here. Just, did you put the foundation in for the house yet? It is. The footings are formed today. They're pouring the footings tomorrow, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we so are making on. progress. Okay, so that so that was one change, and the other change was you wanted to extend the retaining wall down near the bank. Is that correct? I would. We have to remove all the um, stumps that are down at the retaining. We're extending the retaining wall. Yes, at the shed. 
there's two items. I'd like to just do one before the other. Okay. And um, what it is is the elevation of the the land there. It's at 378, I believe it is, and the floor of the existing shed is at um, 380. So I want to bring that wall up to the 380 height to prevent to prevent water from going into that again. Okay. And then um, the removal of the stumps. And yes, we have to remove. They're showing you can see the five trees that are there now. That all the the, the trees are removed. Um, the one on the far bottom of the page is the one that fell over into the lake. And then we removed the two by the dock when we were doing the clearing of the lot. And the stumps and the roots go throughout the entire wall system, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, yep. So we want to clean up that whole wall system and make it so we can, you know, really make sure that we don't put anything into the lake and make the area usable. And also I'd like to add in a stair system within that wall. So that stuff will be even with the outside of the wall going in, and I want to follow the shoreline on that. Okay. All right, uh, Matt, did you have any questions? I think the, the wall down near the, um, the bank would be an improvement um, in preventing yeah, I, washout I, and erosion into the lake. Well, I... I'm not sure I agree with that, Jeff, as far as certainly the area where the, 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 the root ball is exposed, you know, in the original permitting, we had talked about stabilizing that area. Right. Um, however, so the wholesale of, of removing all the vegetation along the bank and replacing it with a stone wall, um, to me, certainly that should all be counted entirely <laughs> as bank impacts. Um, and when you have that amount of bank impact, you know, to me that potentially I, I think is worth considering whether that would require amending the order as opposed to just as a minor project change. Um, and secondly, re replacing all that natural vegetation with a stone wall, um, certainly impacting the wildlife habitat along there. Uh, as we saw from a previous applicant, they were using the dormant live staking along the bank to, to stabilize it, which I think certainly from a wildlife perspective uh, is preferred. Uh, you know, the issues with adding more stone wall to the bank of, of the lake is that, you know, anytime you create a hard structure like that, you're just, you're pushing the wave action further down that eventually it gets to someplace where there isn't a hard structure and that's where you get the erosion. So. You know, putting in hard structures like that, oftentimes you're just kind of pushing the problem down to the, to the next area. Um, and it may, you know, it may look pretty and provide a nice access to the lake, but from an environmental perspective, uh, I don't believe it's providing any benefit. Okay. Again, I'm only asking for about 60 feet. We're not touching the other half of the property, if you can look at the plot plan. We're only going from the dock area to the lake to the other side of the property line where we're removing all those stumps. Do you say right. six feet or 60 feet? 60 feet from the dock area to the bottom of that page is about 55 to 60 feet. So, Mr. Hayes, you were, you were just removing the stumps, though. You weren't proposing to remove all of the vegetation. Um, when we remove all the stumps, they're showing that there's two trees, there's they're showing five trees there. There's actually six, possibly seven stumps in that area that we're removing. So just the stumps though, you're not removing all the vegetation, the shrubs and-, and, there's, and there's, there's very little vegetation there other than, I mean, we're only, I don't think there's that much vegetation there myself, but again, I'm not a botanist and I'm not, privy to that. 
Don, is, is there a view from the other direction of that stump? In that these, these photos place? were taken in regards to a request for an exemption request. So these photos weren't, you know, subject to the NOI. Um, do, you, do you have my pictures from when I was out there? I don't think you've given them to me. Yeah, there was a few out there. Uh, so, so the yeah. other issue, um, Jeff, is yeah. with regard to um, if there were to, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Hayes, it sounds like you're, you're proposing to take all the stumps and the vegetation out and putting a stone wall th through the 55 to 60 feet. You know, again, this, it, to me, this is bank impact and you'd actually be triggering a wildlife habitat evaluation because you have greater than 50 linear feet of bank impacts. So again, just thinking about the permitting of this, if, if nothing else, I think it's, um, to me, it seems like it's kind of rising above the, the minor project change uh, for this level of impact. Yeah. Through the chair? Yep, Don, go ahead. Yeah, the notice of intent application had no proposed resource area impacts. It right. was uh, only, only buffer zone. So that's what the commission approved. And obviously the, the project change request, we've got wetland flags through here and then you've got bank right here. So this bubble is very, you know, not very specific. Right. So you've got at least bank, if not bank and BVW impacts from trying to install a wall like that. So I think you'd need more definitive information, but, and then if you're gonna build a wall like this, it's also gonna trigger uh, chapter 91 for a retaining wall. Right. So the application for the to, to them would also need to be revised as well to the state. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, to 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 consider this as an insignificant project change. Uh, I'd yeah. Agree so with that. so I don't see so how the project change request, Mr. Hayes, you know, is is for fairly minor changes to the product project. Um, so I think what you know, you're hearing from Matt and Don is that, you know, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to propose the work along the bank, the wall, the removal of the um, stumps, we would just need, you know, that's gonna require a high, higher level of scrutiny from the commission and, per, and permitting. Okay. Um, <clears throat> on the project change request. So I think we can approve the wall up near the shed to prevent the water from impacting the, the shed. Thank you. Um, but as far as the wall along the bank, um, you know, you might want to reconsider that if, if it's something that, you know, you do want to do, uh, it would just require some additional, uh, you know, but, you know, a, high, a higher level of permitting essentially uh, and scrutiny. Yeah, because basically when we pull out all the stumps, we're going to have to probably bring rock back in to build up that, to prevent the washout and everything else like that, correct? To actually stabilize it properly without being washed out because you can't just leave it as, as natural earth. Right, so it would have to be stabilized, correct? Right, but stabilization would be bringing in stone or some, or riprap or something like that, correct? Um, it, can be, it can be done through grading, installation of... Um, plantings that keep the soil um, in place. So there, there are def different methods. Okay. And through the chair? Yep, Matt, go ahead. I think the approval was only for those two, for removal of the two stumps that were, you know, really the, the picture that Don had put up that showed them really exposed and the, yeah, the, those. Right. I don't think there was any approval for any additional stump removal along that bank. That stump there was approved from the original owners before when they had to remove the tree. And then that was part of it. But typically they were asking to cut the tree and I could try and find that. That was a, as I said, that wasn't part of this order, but typically the standard remark is, yeah, you want to cut the tree down fine, but leave the stump in place to rot. But this one was because on, on the other trees they wanted cut. It was a, uh, it was these two, so you would have, you know, they, they were still in place, so you would have cut it and the roots would have been in place. 
This one, the roots weren't in place because the, the whole tree went over. So right. we told them, you have to stabilize this. And I think it was at a bad time of year. I think it was like in the, in the spring before leaf out. So like mulch the area until you can get it loamed and seeded to stabilize it through the summer, you know? So, and I can try and bring that if you, you know, I can bring that up, but that's a standard. It's unnecessary. Area. Yeah. So typically when we, re when we remove trees, uh, when, we, when we permit trees to be removed along the banks, Mr. Hayes, uh, we cut them at the base and then leave the root structure in place. They're not, they're not grubbed out. And the reason for doing that is because even though the tree's not there anymore, the root system, as it's you know dying off and rotting, still um, you know serves to keep the soils in place uh, so that they're not eroding out into the lake. So All right. A, okay. So Very good. Can, so we can do the wall behind the behind the shed, and this one here is going to require another. Um, application? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So is the commission okay with that? The, the wall behind the um, shed to prevent the water from impacting it? So we can approve that as a project change? Um, do the chair. Go ahead, Carrie. I'm okay with that based on, you know, what we originally assumed, but um, based on your observations, the runoff coming off like we had said it was and that and there was supposed to be a swale on that side. I just want to be cautious that, you know, any changes out there could make the runoff worse in another area. So just make sure that when you're redoing that wall that you're paying close attention to the grading in that area. Yes, we are. We're pushing the runoff over to the right side of the shed. If you're coming from Downey Street, looking down to the property, which is a discharge area from the retention from the um, catch basin up at the driveway to the right to the riprap. And we're paying very close attention to that to make sure that it does not go into the neighbor's uh, yard at number 14. Or into the lake, like, the property. Yeah, I'm just concerned about, as it's all focused in there, like the rilling and, and going into the lake. Yeah, I think, I think we mentioned, you know, when you're going through the permitting process that you know, the runoff in this particular area on Downey Street is problematic uh, just because of the steep slopes coming off of Downey Street. So just be cognizant of it, you know, um, when you're doing the work, um, I guess is-, is we're, very, we're paying particular attention to all of that, yes. Okay. Okay, if I can get a motion to approve the project change uh, request for the wall um, in the proximity to the shed. Janine, so moved. Okay, Janine made the motion and a second, please. Ted, second. Ted, okay, and we'll do the roll call vote. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. Ted? Aye. And Jeff is an aye. Okay, Mr. Hayes, thank you. Appreciate thank you. Thank you all. Have a good Appreciate evening and stay safe. Yep. Okay, you too. Yep. Thank you. This is the uh, letter where the, the stumps should remain in place, not removed or grubbed out. Okay. That was issued to the Connells last year. What's that again, sir? Uh, in regards to the, uh, the, the tree activity that the, Con the, the Connells asked for, the, uh, the stumps of the two trees will not be removed, grubbed out, will be allowed to decompose in place. So the stumps were never approved, except for the one that was uprooted. Okay. The, the stumps were to remain in place. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So Don, why don't we um, table the uh, sign posting agenda item um, and work through the uh, public forum requests. Sure. And then we'll do the sign yep. posting at the end of the meeting. Okay, so Mrs. Karnofsky, we've already spoken with her. So next up is uh, Mr. Gassett, 114 Pond Street. This is a request for an informal discussion. 
Mr. Gassett, are you with us? Hello. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Excellent. How are you? Doing good, thanks. So I'm going to be working on um, 114 Pond Street. Okay. And I've had some conversations with Don. Um, we are not going to, uh, well, let me start. Three weeks ago, we got approval from the planning board to uh, for driveway access. And we're gonna remove a couple street trees. And okay. that was all approved. And we're also, we planned on taking some trees inside on the lot, which would enable a better line of sight for the driveway access. Okay. Um, what, what was noticed was the wetlands that was delineated when you did the neighbor's uh, property, which was, I think, two years ago, which was Mr. Holden. Mm -hmm. So we haven't changed anything. The wetlands are the same. There's nothing new. Um, what I like the boards, uh, what I'm asking, basically, I have maybe five trees, if you look in the front of the lot, that I'd like to remove at the same time when I'm clearing the lot. But they, there's five trees that fall within your 100 foot buffer. Uh, I, the wetlands is basically across the street at Denny Carlson's property. Okay. And that was all noted before. We just carried the lines over onto our lot. And I was surprised it came that far. So um, I'd love to be able to take them sooner than later when, I, as I'm clearing the lot and not having to bring somebody in twice. Uh, there's five trees there. Uh, the shape of that lot pitches from Pond Street down to the rear of the property. So there's no real way that I know of that we'd harm anything on the wetland side of, you know, it would have to go across the street, but it's all uphill slope. So and the trees, um, okay. Sorry, within go ahead. that, yes, correct. Yep. So the trees are in the um, that shaded area there? That is correct. There's five trees within that shaded area, which fall just inside the 100 foot. And the reason for removal is for structures? Uh, some, the ones near the wall are more for a line of sight to help. Um, the ones uh, further in are a little close to the new dwelling that's going to be built. And, uh, you know, after the recent storms and all these crazy weather we've had, you know, once you take a few trees out, you leave a, a tree by itself. Sometimes it's not as strong anymore. So it, I'd prefer to, if we could, take those out and then uh, replace with some smaller trees. Okay. So... So you would replace the, uh, just so I'm clear, you, the house. You, I'm sorry? I hate to see anything fall on the house as well. Right, no, I understand. Um, yeah. In the line of sight, I think makes sense. That's more of the ones, if you look in the little shaded area near the stone wall, those are more uh, to help with the visual uh, as you're heading out towards Pond Street. Okay. But, but the couple, I think there's only two that are back near the corner. Yep, near the corner of the house. I just feel safer if I could, it would help with the whole project as well. They're kind of close to the house. Okay, and you would replace those with um, trees sure. once the project is completed? Absolutely, yep. All right, I think I'm okay with that. Um, that should be fine. Questions or comments from the commission? Through the chair? Yes, Don. He's, he's, he filed um, an RDA application. That's this, yep. this one right here. So the commission will be reviewing this application 
on November 10th. Well, we're, we're hoping it'll fall for the November 10th. And uh, so it's sort of like he's just asking for, you know, uh, an early start on the trees. So the request for determination. Uh, so I'm sorry, Don. So it, this plan, the site plan, is part of an RDA application that just came in yesterday. Okay. So the commission will be reviewing this as a, you know, so he, he's coming ahead of time, letting you know that you know you guys will be reviewing this as a as an application, just with the window of, of, of time, he's, he's having the tree guys come out to do work outside the commission's jurisdiction. I'm just trying to save a step and have them, you know, to bring all their equipment back twice. It's very difficult. And, uh, you know, it took us longer than we thought to get the scenic driveway entrance approved. And then now, I, you know, now I'm just running against weather. So I'd like to, if possible, it'd be nice to be able to take that at the same time. I mean, I, sure. it's, five, it's five trees, I, I think. Um, I mean, I think I'm okay with that. Uh, to the chair? Yes. Uh, I guess my question, maybe this is a question for Don. Um, is there other work in jurisdiction at all that's been filed under the RDA other than this tree work? Because I'm not sure what the RDA is for if all the work is going to be done before the, it's heard. Right. Well, that's the, it, and the RDA is to confirm, like Brian said, I think part of this um, deline delineation was associated with Holden, but I don't think we looked at this area. So in essence, the RDA is for Matt to, you know, try and get a look up to see if we're in agreement with the delineation there. There's also a delineation back here. So the 100 foot buffer zone is just at the property line there with no work. Touches, yeah, just comes in in the rear, right. Which so, we're staying away from. I just you know, want everything you know, shown, that's all. So it looks like this would be the limit of work that would be under the RDA application. Because all of this work is outside the commission's jurisdiction technically until we can get this confirmed. And I, guess, and, I, and I guess my question would be is if, if the tree removal is due to the house location, is there an opportunity to move the house to avoid clearing in the buffer zone? But again, I feel like we're kind of getting a cart before the horse. Right. Um, well, we basically, uh, I have, unfortunately, I have septic design the way, you know, everything kind of fits, fits the lot the way, um, the way, the way we design this particular property, the house is a decent sized house and septic had to be in a certain location. So that kind of hinges me where the house had to go. Okay. So the RDA is to confirm the the uh, wetland boundaries across the street, Don. Right? Yeah. Uh, so to we see know. what what yeah, impact that would have on the potentially the driveway area. The driveway is outside. You know, as yeah, it's shown, driveway doesn't. Right. So he previously, when he went to uh, planning board for for street approval, I gave comments saying, look, there's wetlands across the street. You should, you know, keep an eye on that. And they were like, yep, okay, the driveway's out. Now they started looking at, you know, this and they're like, oh, now this would be in. So hence the filing. Right, right. To the chair. Yes, Ted. And Matt, you have not confirmed that wetland marking? No, I haven't. I just got this file from Don today. So I right. So it's it. possible that there are more trees within the wetland buffer zone that are potentially being proposed to be removed. Because it's possible the wetlands are even further into the property there, or the wetland boundary. We're going to look to confirm that. 
if there's an intermittent stream channel here, I would be surprised, you know, I think this is going to be fairly accurate. I, I feel like we're jumping the gun uh, is my reaction, similar to what we talked about off of Leonard Street. I, I feel like I want to know all the information before I approve stuff. Just in general, I'm not a fan of removing trees in the buffer zone just for aesthetics. I'd echo that as well, but I think it would help me if I, I, I don't know. I would like to have a discussion about the house. I would like to look at the project in its entirety before I approve removing trees within our jurisdiction. And I, I don't think the tree removal was for aesthetics. I think it was from, I, I think I understood it as there was a couple on the road that were impeding the line of sight pulling out from the driveway. Um, and there were a couple that were in proximity to the footprint of the house that could cause damage you know, during a storm event. Looks like it's one tree, but it's twin trunk. The twin, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's one tree, but it's double trunk. Right. Um, okay, Carrie, what, what's your thoughts? Um, I, I kind of agree that it's a little tough without um, confirming everything first. Through the chair. Go ahead, Ed. Pond Street is a scenic way. So, Mr. Gassett, have you yeah. had a hearing on the trees that you wish to cut within the yes. scenic way? Yes. My actual my appeal period, I believe it's up tomorrow for this for the scenic road. Through the chair. Go ahead, Don. Brian, were the, were the trees for the scenic road, the ones close to the driveway, like right in here? That's correct. Yeah, okay. nothing up near where you are. Right, nothing. No, just one near. on either side. It's only two trees, one on either side of the driveway. And then there's a dead tree in the middle of the lot. Um, it says 33 inch dead tree, which is out of your 100 foot buffer. So that was one of the ones they allowed me to remove as well. And then whatever I needed on the inside, except for where you have the jurisdiction of the 100 foot buffer. Yeah. Hey, I will say. Um, it's uphill quite a bit and it all pitches back towards the back of the lot. I mean, you'd have to see the lot, it, it doesn't it's not going to affect anything across the street, that's for sure. The Pond Street here. The wetlands are across. Yeah. Jeff, what I was going to say is, you know, yeah. I'm a little kind of confused about the order of all this, but typically when I see that the wetlands are across the street on the other side of an existing lawn, you know, I'm more not being the resident tree hugger, kind of okay with some of the stuff. Um, it's not going to be, you know, once you have the street in there, I, right. I don't feel yeah. like the trees in the buffer offer as much help. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that coupled with um, the fact that, uh, you know, it's not, it's not aesthetic reasons that are being removed. It's, you know, it's, um, structural, you know, proximity to the house and uh, trees that, you know, are potentially going to uh, or will, you know, impede the light of sight um, with the driveway. And I mean, it's five trees. Um, Mr. Gassett's willing to plant replacements at the conclusion of the project. So I, I mean, I think I'm okay with it. Um, and then we can go forward with the uh, it's the application, you know, the RDA quest for determin determination of applicability just to confirm the uh, buffer zone and location, um, you know, at our next meeting or the next couple of meetings. You know, it's kind of my sense. You, are you okay with that, Carrie? 
I'm okay with that. All right. Okay. Um, so are we good with that? I'm a little I'm confused, Chair. What we're I thought that this was listed as an informal discussion, and now it feels like it's a vote. I'm the process of this, and maybe it's because even at being on the commission for three years, I'm still a rookie, but it's confusing me. It, I think it's a it's typically it would, I mean, we could handle this as an exemption request, correct, Don? Um, with um, the tree removal. Yeah. Um, or, and and we've and basically like if you've had, say he cut the trees, you know, typically the, the commission, you know, would say, all right, is this something we would have, uh, you know, reviewed under an application or no, there's no way we would ever approved it. So typically you would get a filing after the fact for work that's occurred in, in the buffer zone. Um, he's, he's coming, you know, he's, he hasn't done any of the work yet. He's, you know, he's just looking for, for, for a timing issue. So yeah, you could look at it as, as, as an exemption request or a follow-up, you know, um, and after the fact, do the work, but file after the fact so we can review it and document it. Right. I, I, I think that's, uh, I think we can handle it that way. I mean, Mr. Gass has done, you know, many projects in town. We haven't had any issues with them previously. You know, he's, uh, you know, what he's committed to do, he's done. Um, this is five trees, it's across the street. Uh, I, I mean, if it's a timing issue, you know, just as, as long as we move forward with the RDA and the delineation, and if there's, you know, additional trees that need to be removed, we would have to, you know, we would have to address them at a later point. Um, that, if that's okay, Mr. Gassett. That would be great. Are we, are we good with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Carrie, you're, you're okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. I think we're all set, Mr. Gassett. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a good evening. Yeah, you also. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All right, um, CEA 5 Woody Island Road, emergency certification supplemental information. Yeah. We had um, received the um, IRA action plan and also um, they just gave me yesterday what's going to be needed to um, shore up the, the house. So in essence, this isn't just a simple, let's dig a big hole, get all the um, um, bad soil out and, and backfill it because it migrated under the house. Right. So there's a significant amount of you know, structural work going in. So didn't know if the commission, because when we were talking before, we knew the, uh, the uh, emergency certificate was going to expire and the commission was amenable to issuing an, uh, uh, an enforcement, a friendly enforcement order to go forward. But I didn't know it was gonna to be to the scale. So I thought I'd better run this by you guys to see, would you prefer to have you know, an NOI or are you still amenable with issuing an enforcement order so they can install this type of, um, structural support under the house when they take all the bad soil out. Um, do we know what's involved in the work, Don? I mean. Yeah, you know, it, it's fairly involved and, you know, they got structural engineered plans to put in foundation supports to hold up the existing house. Because they got to go out and take, they got to take the soil from underneath it. So they, because they got to excavate the soil from below it. Yeah. yeah. So without, they got to show up the house so it doesn't collapse when they go to take the bad soil out. 
Um, so the excavation under an IRA would typically be approved as part of the emergency um, certification process, right? Yeah, we had an initial, we had an initial, um, this is what we were going off of. The DEP was report, you know, uh, back, whatever the date is on this, you know, uh, in August, you know, and then they got a, a two month. So then I issued the emergency certificate based on that from those initial reports. So I uh, issued it in August and it, it, it was gonna end here. And then we knew last right. month it was coming up and, uh, but I didn't have this information. I didn't have the IRA plan, which is dated October. And I just got these plans yesterday, I think. The, the date of the 18th, I didn't see them till Monday, yesterday. So when do they want to do the work? Did they give us a schedule? Uh, I would assume they want to move as quickly as possible. Yeah. Are they giving us any status updates on, you know, the remediation that they're doing out there or, you know, I'll, be honest, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I didn't even get a chance to read this report. Okay. I had enough time. I just, I was able to download it, you know? Um, because I had asked that for them before. I go, um, look, if I'm going to issue a, an enforcement restoration order, you got to tell me what's left, you know, and and you know, so we can have a plan to to show how this is going to end. So I don't know if all that information's in here. Uh, I got 164 pages to look at. Okay. So hopefully it's in there. And then these are the plans that I assume go with it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm inclined to, I'm inclined to allow them to continue the work done with stepped up, you know, reporting back to us only because they probably have a short window to get this work done before the ground starts to freeze in the winter. Right. I can uh, condition I can condition that in the friendly EO. Obviously, okay. I, I would uh, I would say you have to build this according to plan. You know, you have to follow all the stuff in the IRA. You know, I I would caveat everything to it. Yeah, why don't we do that? Does that Matt? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think uh, a friendly enforcement is the way to go. I, I'm not sure what you're gonna really get out of a notice of intent at this point. Um, I think just, you know, regular reporting and then, you know, at the end, if if somehow things have changed and there, and there were some sort of resource impacts, you know, at the end, you could probably go back and talk about some sort of mitigation if needed. But I think yeah. I think the, the quickest way, because obviously, you don't you want to nip this in the bud as quickly as you can. So it's not migrating further would be, you know, right. Have done issue the emergency order, um, get it done, and then kind of talk about it after the fact if, as needed. Yeah, I think that makes sense because um, we don't want to hold up the process, you know, with a notice of intent filing. Um, with winter coming, you know, we want them to get the work done um, before the contamination, you know, migrates closer to the lake or, you know, impacts more soil or you know whatever's going on out there um, but why don't we why don't we do that don all right does that, does that make sense to everyone yeah i i completely agree with that okay. let's get it done okay will do all right thank you don um okay and then we have lou 109 winter street Project change requests. I don't know if they. Uh, I don't know if they came on board. Um, I sent an email and I let them know. You know, I was going to bring it to your attention. I don't know if you guys remember it from two years ago. Yeah, this was like there was fifty trees or something they wanted to cut down. Right. I think it was like forty-one. Um, 
some of them were part of the, uh, um, let me see, here's the most recent response. And they just gave me a, this, oh, come on, where's the most recent plan? Yeah. Well, that's the old one. There's a new one, if I can find it. Jeez. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I know I emailed it out. I don't, but yeah, I, I saw, I looked at it today, Don. So you definitely emailed it out. Um, yeah. so, so, I mean, I, I, when they originally filed this now, I thought the plan was that they were going to live in the existing house while the new one was being built and then raise the existing house. Is that incorrect? Well, on this plan right here, oh, crap. The, uh, they're saying on this old one, it was the existing wall to remain. And then this new plan, it said the house is gonna remain. And I'm like, I think that's a violation of zoning. You can't have two houses on one lot. So they would need some sort of variance from uh from uh the board of appeals yeah because that's different from what they told us originally when this was filed because my recollection is once the new house was built that existing house was going to be uh raised and that might have been in the minutes but i don't think it was on the plan it, it was sort of silent okay um so do we know if they have the variance from zoning to have the two houses on the one lot? Not that I'm aware of. So I, I would I would ask that they submit verification that they have approval of that before we allow them to you know tear down all the trees. Because if they're not allowed to have that existing house, then the whole situation with the septic goes away right um the trees being um you know the the trees being a risk fact that the falling on the house would go away if they can't have the house there um so i think we just need a little bit more clarification of what the what they're doing i guess is is my thought and what, what do you folks think? I agree completely. We need a lot more clarification. Likewise. Yep. Does that make sense, Don? Yeah. Um, I, I just, uh, I'm just trying to find that plan. I, I can't believe it's not in here. And, 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 I mean, if, if, you know, if, if zoning is going to allow them to have the two houses and that's indeed their plan, uh, then, you know, if they're proposing to remove trees that are affecting the septic system and, you know, are close to the house and need to be removed, I don't have a problem with that as long as they replace them with other trees. But, you know, I want to make sure that we know exactly what, you know, the scope is, what they plan to do here with the houses. So yeah, here's the uh, here's the current plan. And so you can so you can see how 
in this one, a lot of the trees are outside the buffer zone, but the another one we had, a lot of them were, were inside. So, and I know basically reading this to scale, you got about 31 feet from the corner of the house to the buffer zone here. Uh, you got about 27 here. So some of these trees may be outside our jurisdiction, some um, may be um, within. Obviously these would be um, within, but... Um, yeah, you know, the, the other thing, Don, was when I was looking at this plan, the scale didn't seem like it was accurate to me. Like it's right. Every, yeah. One inch equals 30 feet, right? On not, the plan. Yeah. Because I, I was asking her, you know, can you just stake out the, when I met with the tree, the tree consultant, which isn't the tree consultant anymore, I guess, um, we thought it would just be easier if they, deceptive people could just um, stake out the limit of work so we could see what trees were in and then what trees were so close that, you know, they would get impacted from the, the septic work. And then we we're just asking them to tell us the uh, um, health of the, uh, the other trees. So, and it looked like the numbers went down because uh, on one plan it was 41. Now the current one is, is down around 31. So it seems like they were saying, all right, we just want to deal with the trees that are within striking distance of the house. Um, the file number is 1620 file work session. Which, which I'm okay with, you know, as long as they're allowed to have the house. Right. You, you know, with zoning. Because if they're going to be required to turn it, to tear it down, then it doesn't make sense to Yeah, because I could have sworn Remove the trees. Uh, yeah, on this plan that's from the order it says existing house to remain. And then proposed house. So this is under this is the one that's under the order. But I, I don't think we I don't think to tell you through when we, I don't think anyone saw it to remain when we, you know, because we were so focused on the wetland disturbance and the proposed house. So I guess so you so you'd want to um, ask for me to, to should we tell them it's the commission's understanding that the that the house can't remain due to zoning, but have you got a variance? And if you do have a variance, the commission would be more amenable to the to the tree move if the house is going to stay, but not if it's going to be raised. Is is that what you're thinking? Correct. Okay. I can, uh, I can write back to them that, and I guess, do you want me to deal with, I mean, cause some of my, we already know are bad, um, you know? So a couple of the unsound ones. So do you want me to go out and at least tell them um, the unsound ones? And I thought a couple that were close to the house here um, had some rooting issues, you know? So they've re, you know, they've supposedly re, you know, from, from her pictures have, um, differentiated some of the trees a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah. So, do you want me to take another shot at, at trying to get a sense of, you know, how they're uh, how they're showing them? I I think so. Um, I, yeah, I think that makes sense. And I could try and at least get a sense of, you know. If some of these trees are outside our purview, I could at least say, yeah, okay, those are outside our purview. Right. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense, Don. Okay. Um, and I just want to make sure the scale is right in this plan too, because it, it looked a little off to me. And maybe it's just, maybe it's because I'm not looking at the plan set, you know, on my right. desk. Yeah, maybe. what I had to do is, yeah, I had to take the, the paper copy and, you know, put a scale to it to get a sense of, how much area are we talking out here? Because I wasn't trusting what what they were putting here, you know. It, yeah, because because they're saying one inch equals thirty feet on this plan. Right. And these would have been, you know, their um, their um, McIntyre plans as a base, and then they were just they were just putting their, you know, they were taking his base plan and then sketching on top of it, you know. So 
right. these orange dots from the old one, you know, are just them. You know, McIntyre's not doing it, I guess is what I'm saying, you know? Yeah. It's the, it's the applicant, you know? Right. And that's why I was having like, well, how do I know, you know, where these trees are, you know, because they're just putting them down, you know? Yep. All so, right. Yeah, let, let's just get some more clarification from them. All right. But um, you'd be okay with me at least giving them an okay on the, uh, the ones that I think are, uh, are diseased and the ones that were, there were a couple that was, you know, uprooting you know, right in front of the house, you know? So, yeah, I think that's, that's fine. All right. But the ones that I thought were healthy and the commission was asking, well, tell us, you know, are they healthy or diseased? You know, they didn't, they still haven't clarified that. They just said, instead of giving us a report on all the trees, you know, this one structurally, just like that other report we had earlier, Arborists went out and said, this tree is this, this is that. That didn't come. They just said, oh, okay. Uh, the old, uh, you know, they just said it was when, you know, susceptible to hitting the house. You know, it's like, well, yeah, every tree is, you know, susceptible to coming down at some point, but. You yeah, know but, I, but I mean, if it's, if it's posing a risk right. to yeah. hitting the house. Yeah, structurally unsound. Yeah, exactly. Then, that, then that's fine. But you know, no, if, the, if if they're going to be allowed to keep the house there, right, <laughs> is the is the point, right? Um, yeah. All right, I'll uh, I'll respond, and maybe I'll just see see the uh, the leadership team, the chair and the vice chairs on my response. You know, to, okay. So you guys can, can so you're not in the dark. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Um, So zero Pond Street, this was uh, signage for posting. Ed, I think this was your agenda item. Yes, this, and I, I believe um, that the either Halt or the Trails Club have put up signs. And what happened was I, I received an email um, questioning where hunting was permitted and not permitted. And the, the complicating thing was that the town forest hunting is permitted, Cameron Woods hunting is permitted, but many of the access points like at Whisper Way, at Sylvan indicate that hunting is not permitted. So it, it left some confusion. So, um, we're getting new, the signs are in place, um, indicating that the hunting season, and there's various seasons with various techniques starting the end of our, end of September, I think, beginning of October through the end of the year. So there's signs there just to give people a heads up that um, if you go strolling in here, you need to realize that you better have orange on, or if you've got a dog, the dog better have orange on. Okay. So I think it's all in, I think it's all in hand. Okay, good. All right, and who was responsible for putting the signs up? Um, John Ritz and Stephen Lewandowski. Okay, good. All right, so that was just an update for us? Yep. Okay, thank you. And um, I think that covers everything on the agenda for this evening, unless someone has something else that they would like to discuss. John, were we going to talk about changing the time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Anna. Um, so, Carrie and Melissa wanted to ask the commission if we would be amenable to starting the meeting a little bit later. Uh, because of their responsibilities with their younger ones in the family, and practices and things like that. So I'm okay uh, with it. Okay. So Carrie, what are you thinking seven or seven thirty? I was thinking like if we went back to seven like we used to. We like moved it up. Um, right, because like we had Zoom fatigue and we were trying to get more time because the Zoom calls are taking longer, but it seems like yeah. Seems like they're going well. So I say we go back to our seven o'clock meetings. 
Yeah, I think that I think that's good. Seven thirty, I think, might be a little bit too late. Yeah, it's too late. Um, us older folks have a tough time staying yeah. up late, so. Um, so <laughs> anyway, seven is fine. To yourself, pal. <laughs> you don't have a long drive home from the senior center anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so everyone's good with that. So, so seven o'clock. We'll do a seven to nine thirty posting. Is that what you want? Yeah. Yes, okay. please, Don. Yep. We'll update that. All right. And Carrie, if I fall asleep at the end of the meetings, you're gonna have to take over. Just so you know. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so do I have a uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved, Janine. And a second. Carrie, second. All right. And we'll go through the roll call. Carrie. Aye. Jim. I think Jim dropped off. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Ted. Aye. And Jeff's and I. All right. For the chair. What's that? For the chair. Yes, Matt. I just had a little bit of personal news that I would share with everybody here. This is this is the latest addition to our farm here in Harvard. Oh, oh nice. So cute. I'm not born on a Sunday one. afternoon. This past Sunday? Yep. So he's about less than a day old in this picture. Wow, wow that's cute. Oh, he's big. And his name is Macintosh. <laughs> nice. So how many do you that's have now? Rubian names. <laughs> This is number 24. Wow. Wow. Um, that's cool. So Matt, I didn't say that. Can you hold the picture up again, please? Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Always All nice right, to guys. Have you. Emily. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night.